Hey, today I'm going to start something actually quite different. Uh, I'm going to show you how I understood and how I learned story structure and the little tricks that I learned over time to help me understand it a lot better because I'm a very visual person. So this helped me greatly and I hope it helps you. So I'm going to use a visual representation of everything. So let's dive into that. So I'm going to use right away the show The Bear, the first episode of the first season. And before I get into that, let's just look at, you know, a regular timeline of a script of any kind. You have beginning end going this way. And you have your three acts. Two is the largest, one and three. So you have your inciting incident, you have your midpoint and you have your climax. So very straightforward, that's usually what's taught, et cetera, et cetera. So the way I learned was a lot more easy, at least for me, was there was turning points. There was one and two in the first act, three, including the midpoint, and another one before the end of the end of the second act. And then two more at the third act, which is one here, and the climax. And then obviously this is the resolution. So this is how I outline usually my scripts, regardless if it's um, one feature film or one episode or a whole season. Even the season looks like this. And you can break down the episodes in groupings in each, you know, act because you really break it down that way. And I'll get into different aspects of that especially when it comes to shows like The Bear, which I like, I'll break them down in terms of what episodes were here, what episodes were here, and what episodes were here. So today we're just going to focus on the first act and what needs to be done on a basic level to start that. So this is just the first act. So typically you would have your inciting incident here. Well, further, it doesn't really matter either here, this way, or this way. So if you are more experienced and more talented, you would just thrust this all the way more forward. And a good example is the bear. The bear, if you look at the sequence of events in the bear, let's let's read it out. So ignore the first one because that's really the inciting incident because he goes right into it. That's very talented. So either way, the first things you see all here is essentially Carmi wakes up from a dream, then he opens a restaurant, then he barters for meat. Then, he, then we introduce the chaotic kitchen environment. Then the villain, or roughly, you know, if you know the show, kind of a villain, you, his cousin or kind of cousin, Richie, comes into play. So you're introducing all these things. Carmi introduces the new process. He wants to change everything. You know, brief flashback showing his background and stuff like that, where he came from. And then obviously the financial aspect of having this new restaurant thrust on him. So that all needs to be put into this first act and to do that or once you do that it actually helps in terms of your story and the way it's going so let's look at that so in this show in the bear the first episode the inciting incident actually is pushed like it's he's he essentially he's in it he's already in it and the dream is just like a foreshadowing of the show and the inciting incident is right from the beginning. So essentially he's going like this rather than starting from here and going like that. You know what I mean? So, but typically if you want to make it even easier, the way I learned it was there's inciting incident that moment in other previous videos. And then there's another moment here. So to use the matrix as a, as an example of that aspect, let's look at the first inciting incident of the matrix. All right. So you go further down the matrix. So we essentially have Trinity opens the whole thing. And that really for Trinity, it's right here. It sets up the th like kind of the vibe, the themes, everything like that. It doesn't really set up Neo, but it sets up his world or the fake world, the matrix that he lives in. Right. So that's a quick setup. Beautiful thrusts you into that world all in here. So the inciting incident is really when we meet Neil here. And in that video, as you can see on the right side, is he's by his computer and he's essentially just waking up to Morpheus's message. That's here. Most people would say that's not 
I wouldn't say most, but some people would say that that's not the inciting incident, and it would be here, which would be this, which would be Neo receiving or choosing the red pill. So, but for me, I believe the real inciting incident is at the computer. He takes the risks, listens to Morpheus, meets Trinity, and then he kind of backs down. So he does go forward, then he backs down because he doesn't go out the window. That, you know, if you see, if you saw the movie, he doesn't go out the window. So, but then he gets another chance once he sees that the tracker in his body is real. So this is the second turning point where he essentially pushes forward and says, you know what, I'm committing 100%. And then he has to jump, as I say, jump off this cliff into the second act. So everything has to be introduced here. There has to be a moment where he has to make a decision. You don't always have to have this, but it's good because it solidifies their decision and puts higher stakes. So in between here, there's a lot going on. So let me go back for that. Usually, yeah, usually in between these two major moments and or scenes, there's a couple of scenes in between that shows him that he made the decision, he goes back, and then he tries again. And that you believe in the character a lot more rather than, okay, let's just go. So there's more detail to this in terms of what to set up. I will get into later videos on specifics, but there's things you need to set up. You need to set up your theme. You need to set up, obviously, the world, the character, and within that character, you have to set up their lie, which informs the thing they want externally, which drives them in the beginning of the film. You know what I mean? And here, at this point, they get to explore that lie at the inciting incident. And in the Neo's case, he goes for it, comes right back, and then goes for it. So if he did not choose to do this or even finally do this, he can just go right back and there's no real story this way. He goes back as Mr. Anderson and it's all done. So in a basic level, that's what it is. Same thing with the bear. The bear is done really well. Obviously, it's more of a modern thing and people have learned over time to just dive straight into it where the inciting incident is just the whole beginning. If you are if you can set up everything right then and there in one or two scenes, that's amazing. And kudos to you. But these two help me out a lot because it I feel for the characters a lot more when you have them choose, fail a bit, kind of, you know, wander and then say, ah, fuck, I got to do it. Or the world pushes them and then they got to do it. So, my scribbling and everything. But this is Act 1. If you do not establish everything you can, whether it's enemies or themes or anything like that here in Act 1, everything else fails and you're going to see problems arise in Act 2 and everything like that. So their motivations, all these things have to be established. And this moment here, this inciting incident first or the other one that solidifies everything, you essentially have to push them to this point something has to happen as in the other videos you can go back and in terms of plotting this whole thing typically what i do if i do this in a vertical setting if i look at it vertically i would go say here's act one here's act one let me put this up again all these things so say that's act one you would have a bunch of scenes that are introducing the world etc all these things here then you have the inciting incident that's one scene then you have a bunch of, see bunch of scenes in between, and then you have another scene. It doesn't have to be a, a specific number, but enough so that you establish what you need to, you know, in between these two points. And then jumping into this second act here. So establish everything you can here. Comment down below if you want me to put a worksheet that is not sloppy and drawn out like this. You know what I mean? So until next time. Let me know what you think. Peace out.